I'm not ashamed. What is the baptism that Jesus still needed to be baptized with? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Luke on walking through the Bible. It's worth the glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Luke chapter 12. We're going to be reading from verses 49 to 59. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Luke chapter 12, beginning of verse 49. I came to send fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to be, to be baptized with, and how distressed I am till it is accomplished. Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. From now on, five in one house will be divided, three against two and two against three. Father will be divided against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Then he also said to, multitude, to the multitudes, Whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, A shower is coming, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, There will be hot weather, and there is. Hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that you do not discern this time? Yes, and why even of yourselves do you not judge what is right? When you go with your adversary to the magistrate, make every effort along the way to settle with him, lest he drag you to the judge. The judge deliver you to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you shall then not depart there till you have paid the very last mite. In this chapter, Jesus is surrounded by a multitude. Usually when we see this happen, Jesus either performs miracles or teaches the entire multitude, but for the vast majority of this chapter, he does neither of those things. No miracles are performed, and the teaching is aimed primarily at the disciples. He did teach the parable of the rich fool to the crowd that, to teach against covetousness, and he did apply his teachings to the disciples about being ready for his second coming to all who would be his followers. But some of his promises, like the Holy Spirit directly teaching them all things when standing before those who mocked Christ, would be for the apostles alone. In our last lesson, we discussed how Jesus wasn't teaching that there are differing degrees of punishment in hell based on the type of sin we commit. In truth, what Jesus was talking about there was based on the knowledge of our wrongdoing, not the type of wrongdoing. Being both knowledgeable when we sin and ignorant when we sin and don't repent is deserving of punishment. But to the one who knowingly sinned, the punishment will feel much worse because they should have known better but didn't repent. But it will be the same punishment, eternal separation from God and punishment in hell. Jesus concludes that section by saying, For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required, and to whom much has been committed of him they will ask the more. We should all desire to know as much of the Bible as we can know, for in it we find the confidence of our salvation. Let's not be afraid that our knowledge would somehow incur on us extra punishment for failing to do it, for it should have the opposite effect. More knowledge should keep us from sinning and provide us with the assurance that we will be saved. Let's therefore study the Bible more and go out and teach it more so others can be saved. Coming to verse 49 now, Jesus concludes his discussion with the disciples by saying that he came to send fire on the earth. This again is referring to the time when the gospel would go out. For in teaching the gospel, the apostles would be setting spiritual houses on fire that would either purify one's soul by causing someone to obey or destroy one's soul in exposing their sin leaving nobody without an excuse as to why they didn't obey. Jesus had wished that that fire had already been kindled, in other words, it had already started, because it would have meant that he had already suffered. That's because the gospel couldn't go out to the whole world unless Jesus had been baptized with the suffering of the cross. Jesus was not looking forward to that time, for it would cause him great agony. He, however, was looking forward to the results, salvation of mankind. But lest the disciples think that the teaching of the gospel would would bring everybody to obedience, it would not, for it would cause division. Families would be divided, with some obeying the gospel and others not. Those who did not obey would try to undermine the faith of those who did. So those people needed to be warned of the cost of following Jesus. The gospel still divides today. It divides the righteous from the wicked. It divides families and friends. And while we might not desire that all, while we might desire that all of our family would be saved, we shouldn't cause their unbelief to impede our belief. We need to obey Christ no matter what. In verse 54, Jesus turns to the crowds to chastise them. He tells them that they could look out into the sky and be able to forecast the weather. If there were clouds in the western sky, they knew rain was coming. And if the wind came from the south, they knew it would be hot. They could do all of these things, and yet they could not discern the time 
in that they didn't recognize who Jesus was. Jesus performed miracles, he cast out demons, and he taught mightily, and yet they didn't recognize him as the Messiah. Such was shameful. He then goes on to chastise them that they don't judge what is right. He tells them that before they go to court, they should try to settle with the one who is bringing them there, lest they be judged guilty and thrown into prison till they paid all. It is a lesson to us that if we commit wrong, we should try to right the wrong and pay restitution instead of seeing if the courts will let us off. If we pay this restitution, then who knows, perhaps the person would forgive us and we can avoid going to jail. As a Christian, we must always seek to do right, but when we don't, we need to repent and do what we can to correct what we have done. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Luke chapter 13, verses 1 to 9, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.